And welcome everybody to this episode of the Coming Home Podcast with John Allen. I'd like to introduce to you all a new series. Let's call it Tiffy's Tuesday. Uh, (laughs) And there's that wonderful laugh from my wonderful (laughs) friend, Miss Tiffany or Tiffy Troutman. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I've missed you. I've missed you so much. It's been so long since we talked last. Yeah, too long. It's crazy. Why do we do this to ourselves? <laughs> well, you know, the Rona. Life. You know, life. life. Yeah, and, the, yeah. Yeah, and the fact I have an electric car, I can't make it all the way to you. <laughs> so. <laughs> you know, I, I love Norway. Norway is in, in the sense of their progressiveness and, and forward thinking. Uh, but I think they're missing something there. They are pushing the electric cars, but they are not expanding the grid you know the the the, the recharging uh, network. Word. It's crazy. Word. I have what are they I have I have absolutely no public place in my town to charge my car. That's crazy. Well, I found no. I lie. I found one. I found one, but you have to pay for it. As much really as they're expensive. pushing for the electric cars, as much as they're putting these different tolls and and extra mm. charges and taxes on the regular um, uh, gasoline or diesel cars, they should make it doable to have an electric car absolutely like i can't come visit you i have to hop on the train well, I mean, my car's not gonna make it i'll get i'll get i'll get like halfway there and then i gotta walk and hope i charge something but there's no yeah. charging stations on the way yeah. to you either yeah. i checked it out well get, so with, it, norway. get with it norway get with it <laughs> now here we go with a new series that you're going to be fronting can you tell our listeners what this is going to be about yeah. Well, listen, I I have done some thinking. You know, I've done some several odd jobs in my life and and one of them I've understood to be a scourge plaguing women for like hundreds of years by now. And that plague is marketing. I used to work in marketing. And uh, I understand, you know, the, all the, the psychology of the wording and stuff and, and how to get people to buy your product. But I think there is a huge separation between marketing towards men and marketing towards women. And what got me thinking that was the other night I was watching TV and this commercial came on for this men's, I don't know, shower gel or whatever it was, but it shows him. I'm not going to name any names of any products, by the way, because <laughs> first of all, them mofos ain't paid to be on your show. So exactly. I'm not going to, that's right. There's, there's no ad service, so I'm not going to help. This them, brother but. don't come cheap. Word. Well, okay. I come cheap, but not for free. Let's say that. Well, yeah. <laughs> if you like it, you better put a ring on it. You know what <laughs> I mean? <laughs> so, so I'm not going to name any names, yeah. but it was just for this man's product for shower gel. And the commercial goes, uh, the man squirts a shower gel in his hand and he starts washing his hair. And then he just looks at the, the foam that's on his hands and he shrugs. And then he starts, you know, going to town downstairs and getting that sorted out, uh-huh. the basement sorted out, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And that was the end of the commercial. It couldn't have been more than 10 minutes. And yeah. I'm sure every man would buy it because they know that it's like a 17 to one product. You sure. just wash every orifice and every part of your body with that one product. So yeah. men don't need, I guess, the psychological marketing that apparently women need. And so right after that commercial, I saw a commercial for a women's deodorant. Yeah. And this commercial felt like it went on for fucking ever. Okay. <laughs> and it started talking about the ingredients that is in it. And the ingredient was pearl extract. Pearl extract. With pearl extract for your deodorant that goes underneath your armpits. It, it came with pearl extract. Now, I got to thinking. I had to do some research. I'm like, what the fuck is pearl extract? How do you get an extract from pearl? You know, and uh, I looked up what a pearl was, and basically, what a pearl is is like uh, it's either a piece of sand or a piece of food that gets stuck in the mollusk of an oyster, mm-hmm. and then the oyster starts to fight it, and so it starts to calcify over it. And I started thinking, what is that like? Well, that's kind of like if you back in 1985 went to go see Back to the Future in the theater. And you got like a jujube or like a piece of beef jerky stuck in your teeth. And then you decided not to brush your teeth up until now. And all that calcification came out. Now, why am I putting that shit under my armpit? That's a good question. And how exactly does that stop my sweating? 
That what is a that very do? good question yet again. The, yes, see. So I think the psychology of wording towards, um, you know, uh, marketing towards women is a little bit off. Like, do they think we're stupid? Do well, they, I was they, just going to say, it sounds like they expect women to be stupid in that, in that instance. Right. To be stupid and not think it through. And let, let's just keep fooling these women. And meanwhile, they're laughing behind their hand. Ha ha, look at these stupid bitches. Right. 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 That's what I'm feeling because they just try to dig into the psychology. And yeah. then not only that, but the the wording that they use, like um, on the bottles. Well, look, I got some products here, John. I should have asked you to get some man products, but um, <laughs> I got these women products right here. And I got this body lotion. Uh huh. And then and the reason why I buy it, because I'm not the girly girl that uh, most people are. I just go for the shit that I need. And it says dry skin. I'm like, word, I'll buy that one. That's yeah. all I go for. Right. Yeah. And I never really sat and read the product. And this one says for irresistibly already. We're going into the psychology. We want to, Women want to be irresistibly <laughs> smooth. Right. Irresistibly smooth with indulgent moisture care. And I said, ooh, that sounds nice. That sounds real nice, okay. right? You know, that alone could erase the whole Me Too movement. Right. Because the men's defense, the men's defense would be, well, she was irresistible because right. she was using. <laughs> Word, right? The, okay, you know what? And, and when you say it, it, it sounds kind of, it sounds very superficial and almost childishly ignorant that they would market that with that word irresistible. Right. But here's the worst part. So here's in the small print way down at the bottom of the bottle. It says for a 24 hour, noticeably smoother skin. 24 now, I started, hour, noticeably smoother noticeably, skin. Noticeably, John, noticeably. Now, who the fuck <laughs> is, is noticing my skin change from some hand cream? The only thing I could think of is some Ed Gein motherfucker that wants to turn me into a lampshade or something like that. <laughs> and that's the kind of shit I want to avoid. So I don't know why I bought this product because like, I don't want no, it's gotta be some kind of stalker that's been checking out. Yeah. Like, Ooh, you know, that's kind of scary. Well, although you would make a cute lampshade. actually, I think I would. I think I would. <laughs> no, I get it. No. There's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, like I said, almost childishly ridiculous terms descriptive words that they're putting into these prod products yeah because you know i worked in marketing yes yeah. and and so i was one of those assholes that that started you know using you know check the thesaurus and try <laughs> to find some really fancy words and stuff but i did marketing towards tech so i did the the type of vague marketing when you go to like some company it says you know we have solutions for your everyday needs for your, and just really random. And yeah. you have to read the whole thing to understand. And you still don't understand what the fuck they really do. And it wasn't really hey, directed towards one gender or the other. It was an all encompassing or gen not, general not just gender, but I'm talking about, I did tech. So it was, wasn't directed toward any company whatsoever. You know, you don't know if we did marketing. We don't know if we did, uh, it, it just says it solutions for your okay. everyday needs. Mm -hmm. Like what the fuck does that mean? Like yeah. what do you actually do? Yeah. 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 So I understand the generalization, but the, the wording here on this bottle, I'm not going to say the name, but this one I bought because it just smelled like water, lily, and oil. I didn't really quite know uh, what that did, but this one says with care oil pearls. Care now we're back oil. To the, now we're back to the pearls. pearls but now, yeah, they care, now they care. Care oil yeah. pearls. Care oil pearls for a soft and fresh feeling skin. And so now I look on the ingredients and I'm trying to figure out where the hell that is. Um, in the ingredients, because you know, when you have an ingredient list, they name it from the most ingredient down to the least, right? Yeah. So yeah. I'm trying to look for the pearl situation, and it has no pearls on it, but I did find cellulose. Huh. Yeah. So I'm wondering uh, what these bubbles are if I'm just rubbing fat on me while I'm trying to wash the fat off me. I wonder if. You know, th this whole thing about false advertisement. How far right. are these companies allowed to go? Well, I just, I with these crazy, with these crazy well, uh, description of the ingredients. Well, this is how we get like people like Gwyneth Paltrow. So they, they use those crazy words on her goop site. I don't know if you've seen anything about her goop things. No. But she's, no. she, uh, she sells a candle that smells like her orgasm. Oh, boy. Yeah, Gwyneth Paltrow. Said. 
Yes, you haven't heard of Goop. Oh shit! I, I didn't think, think she was. I didn't <laughs> think she was Saturday Night Freaky like that. Okay. Yeah. So oh. she has a, she has a candle that smells like her orgasm, and uh, it smells like grapefruit. Whose orgasm smells like grapefruit? Wow. <laughs> What do you have? See, your, your mind is blown right now, My right? mind is blown. I, right. So. <laughs> what in the world? How, who has ever experienced a grapefruit smell in an orgasm so that they I, I, can truthfully put that into a product and say that, yes, this is a real thing? This is a real thing, yeah. So that so, is, so, so what, I'm wondering then what kind of a, or what, what subsection of the female market would something like that appeal to? I, I'm I'm very curious about that. So um, this is what I'm wondering: like, why they think we're stupid? Why don't they just tell us what the product does, like they do with men? Right, because you know, I couldn't imagine Louis C.K., for example, having a a cologne and it's marketed as being the smell of Louis C.K.'s jerk off orgasm. <laughs> I couldn't. I, and, and and okay, for maybe for the humor effect, men would buy it. But most Probably. people would be like, what kind of weird mess is this? Right. But why is that okay on a woman's product? Why would women, I don't know. And it must be a successful product if it's out there. They're not going to well, sell I, it. They're I don't gonna... know. Of, I, well, they sell it, but they sell it like they, she sells this vagina egg for 75 bucks or some ridiculous price. You what know? you call it, a vagina egg? Yeah, I, I'm not really sure what the hell the name of it's called. Like a it's sex toy? To no, it's supposed to be this. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I hope there's no children listening. Anyway, <laughs> it's supposed to be an egg that a woman um, shoves in her uh-huh. uh, her orchid, and then she squeezes on it, and she just holds it for the day and to strengthen the... Uh, like a continuous Kegel exercise. Kind yeah, of. For, yeah, it's like it's like what you, what you do, heavy lifting, you know. It's heavy <laughs> but, lifting. But it's down there lifting. in a, in a pooty toot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's cooter, cooter power lifting is what that is. So. <laughs> World champion. World champ, but don't cough. <laughs> now, now I've, <laughs> I've I have never heard of that. Now You've that, never heard of that? No, I've never oh. heard of that. Now that is a marketing challenge right there. How can that be marketed towards women so that they take it seriously? Or maybe there's no intention for it to be taken seriously. That's a it's a it's a huge question. So so the the anger that came inside me, you know, looking at all this shit, and not only that, but they have ingredients that none of us has ever heard of. Like yeah. they have uh, jojoba butter or yeah. whatever. That, I don't even know what a jojoba yeah. is. This one, these one, this one has muru muru butter. Oh boy, gotta I, try that. I, now I gotta fucking Google something, you know, because <laughs> I don't know what that is. And not only that, but they have like muru muru, and they have ylang ylang. Like the shit's so nice, they gotta name it twice. You gotta name it twice. Like, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I don't, I don't know what it does. Just, just tell me what the fucking thing does. I don't want to sit there and Google shit when I'm buying my product. What do you think it is that has led these different companies to go that route when it comes to marketing your product? Psychology. It's absolutely a psychology. That's one thing that made me really good in marketing is knowing, knowing my audience and knowing how to talk to them. And the words they use are like, it's infused with jasmine. You know, they use the word infused, infused yeah. right? Because when you hear the word infused, yeah. instead of we just crushed a bunch of this shit up and mixed it with some other shit, it's it's infused, and that and that's what you do with your tea, <laughs> right? People infuse their yes. tea, so yeah. it makes women think, oh, tea time! I'm like a queen. Oh, and then pinkies go out, and we think we gotta buy the goddamn product. But infused, it just means we crushed up a bunch of shit and put it, mixed it in there, and then they use other words like essence and extract and what the fuck is a pearl extract how do you make a pearl extract yeah. i still don't know i'm gonna yeah. look that up i'm gonna go down a wiki hole after this shit but uh but yeah because a, a pearl is a hard thing and yeah and, and not only is it a hard thing you know when you describe it the way it really is you know it's a it's a foreign object that has been it, lodged been, in it, an orifice it's really nasty it's nasty. Why would I put that shit in my hair? It's like it's, it's a piece of beef jerky that's been sitting there for 20 years. And now I'm going to put that under my armpits. But how does that stop my sweat? You know, how does that stop me smelling like a bag of rotten onions after I've been working all day? I wonder what would happen if someone had the guts and the humor, the wit to swing mm-hmm. it the other way. 
Like, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, uh, you said a couple minutes ago, if, you know, if someone were to say, yeah, so we just took a bunch of shit, ground it up and, and put it up in his mofo. Yeah. And if they put That's that it. on the back, put that on the back of the bottle. Right. And right. I wonder, I wonder what, the, I think that would be actually a good marketing effect. <laughs> but for whom? But for whom? Well, people like us, people with a sense of humor and people who kind yeah. of roll their eyes at the assumption uh, that these, these companies have, they assume that people are stupid. They yeah. assume that people are easily misled. They assume that people want the fluff and flutter instead of the real thing. Right. And you know what? And that that takes me to my last super pissed off and major anger is the pink tax. The fucking pink tax. Have you heard of the pink tax? I haven't heard of it, but I think I know what you mean by it. Okay. Well, this is the fact that, uh, well, you know, I I work several jobs, and one of them is stocking groceries. And so the other day, I'm stocking razor blades, okay? And I'm not going to name the company, because I already promised you. But on one, it's blue packaging, the blue and black and stuff, and, and the only thing it says is, the best a man can get, right? Yeah. I think we all know who I'm talking about, yeah. but that's all right. <laughs> and then on the female packaging, same company, it's got all these flowers, and it starts naming all this fucking lotion and the ylang lang and all these little fucking, <laughs> and it's inspired by nature and all this shit. And I don't know what that means because shaving is not exactly inspired by nature. It kind of goes against what we're supposed to be doing. But anyway, I digress. Anyway, so, but I looked at the, the, the actual product. Both of them had five blades. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Both of them had swivel heads. Yeah. Both of them had lotion on the tip. Both of them were pretty much shaped the same way. This one was blue. Uh-huh. It was 129 kroner. Uh-huh. This one was pink. It was oh, 199 boy. kroner. Oh, boy. The pink tax. The pink tax. Just because they put some glitter and pink paint on the fucking thing, now you have to pay like up to 20, 25% more. It's absolutely ridiculous. The that is tax. ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So whenever they market anything for, for towards women, it's automatically, they, let's put these stupid fucking words on it. Let's put some pearl extract or whatever, or jojoba essence. Everybody knows, if any baker knows, there's a difference between essence and extract. Extract means you actually soaked it in alcohol or whatever. you got all pieces of it in it. Essence, that just means like jojoba. It's, it's like something so, similar to... No, it or, just means like somebody had some jojoba in the room while you were making it. It was just there. Yeah, yeah. It was just present <laughs> in the room. Or, or, you know, like with the essence of lime, it's just like somebody in the next room screaming yeah. the word lime while you're pouring it. That's Essence is nothing. What the fuck does that mean? It's literally the last ingredient on this product, the essence of it. I don't know what that means. So I'm really sick of, of them treating women like we're stupid in marketing. And I wish they'd just tell us what the product did. And, uh, yeah. You know, that is about. that is such a very interesting subject. And I think you could go even deeper, even deeper into it. And don't, I, don't encourage me, John. Don't encourage me. <laughs> well, it would, be, it, it would be interesting to have um, some marketing uh, leader of a major company and have them on the air with us and ask them these questions and then see how they try to tap dance their way out of it. I would like that. I would really like that. I would like to kind of confront one of these people when I'm in this mood, like I am now. Because <laughs> I've been so, thinking about this shit all night. I haven't slept. I'm like, what is this about? <laughs> well, it's, it's, I, I just wonder how hard they're laughing behind their, their hands at this foolishness, because it is foolish. Mm. And yet we have become so used to it. I don't know when this kind of stuff started, but... Apparently, we have become so used to it that no one questions it, or not enough Nobody people, does. or not enough people question it because they're still doing it. Right, right. They're still doing it. They're still doing it, and it's absolutely ridiculous. And you know, there's there's being there's a lot of changes being around in the world right now, and I'd like this to be one of them. I think it should mm. be one of them because they do talk to us like we're stupid, and they use these stupid psychological words yeah. to make us feel like we're not worthy also. And then we need to feel like pearls and mood or mood or butter, whatever the fuck that is. See, like and my it's man different. knows. See, and it's yeah. different for men because when they throw in those, those extra uh, strong descriptive words, it gives the men a feeling of 
empowered. They're they're empowered or they're more masculine. They're tougher. Right, but they don't they don't have stronger. to use, but they don't have to use the words like with the essence of the Viking bloods and the bones. <laughs> it's ground with the bones of your enemies, you know, to make them feel like a man, you know, yeah. in that product. They don't put that fucking ingredient on their product. So it's, yeah. Wow. Interesting. All it says is fresh. You know, I, I've seen the men's, you know, it's look fresh and then axe body spray, all it is is the commercial they're spraying on them and then like all these bitches are around them and suddenly it's popular <laughs> that's all they need they're like am i gonna smell good enough all right We're i done. tell you that axe body spray that uh that has gotten me through quite a few of these shoulder surgeries thinking of the women who are gonna have to set my catheter i tell you that <laughs> axe body spray dark temptation <laughs> dark temptation that smell that that goes we, on we weren't supposed to name names john i'm sorry <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, God. i take it back i take it back i did not mention axe body spray the 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 essence of dark temptation i did not absolutely name not the axe body spray <laughs> essence of dark temptation absolutely not we never named that one Dude, John, I love talking to you, man. I've missed you so much. We need to get and you up here. We need to get you on that train from uh, your your city to my city and, and, mm-hmm. and just hang out. Uh, whether we do another podcast episode or not, just to come up and, and just hang out and small talk. Just hang out. Oh, yeah. You know, it's... Um, I don't know what what's... I don't know what's going on with me. I don't I don't have cabin fever. I don't. No. But But something is missing in my day-to-day life. And I Fresh think it. I think it is, you know, and I've been doing the podcast, but I think I'm right. missing more face to face conversation about nothing, about normal things. Well, it's the energy in the room, John. That's the difference. You know, it's it's the energy in the room. I, I don't know if you've seen any of these like, um, you know, late night talk shows and stuff that they've been doing from their home, even their comedy and their I've stopped. and their their yeah. I can't do it feeling. anymore. Well, I take that back. Bill Maher. I'm I've I've actually I'm watching him more than I yeah. used to. For some reason, yeah, he's gotten better he, now. He's well, gotten better. You know why? Because he has the he has the canned laughter that he fills in. He has a reaction, and it's oh, really hard okay. yeah, to yeah. do comedy without a reaction and the feedback. So he used that canned laughter. You see it every every bit that he does, and then he has some. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that helps, and it helps with you too. It helps you feel it too. It's the energy in the room. Yeah, that, maybe that's it. Because again, it's not cabin fever. I'm not like depressed. I'm not lonely or anything like that. But I do feel like something is missing, and I it's it's that day to day, face to face conversation. You know, I don't I don't go to the gym anymore. Uh, I have my yeah. home my home gym, and I'm loving it. But yeah. I miss that interaction <clears throat> with with people. And at the same time as I miss it, I I and I don't think I'm paranoid, but I'm just being very careful. With this Corona thing. Oh, as you should be. Yeah, as you yeah, should be. Yeah. I think we're, we're getting our second wave down here. I mean, yeah. for a long time in my little town, we had zero cases. And yeah. all of a sudden, yeah. now we got five. And yeah. then it's, it could it's expand. It's coming back around again. I don't think it's going to get to a disaster stage. But it is, well, coming, they, it is coming back around, though. It is. They, they actually closed down a burger place down in my town, too. Yes, because, I saw that. Burger, yeah. yeah. We're not going to say that. A burger place. That burger, a burger place. place. That burger joint. That burger place. Yeah, the burger joint. They closed that one down. Uh, so, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm being really careful. Our kids are going back to school, though, so. You think it's going to last? Um, I know my, the, my child's school will take this seriously. Yeah. So I, I really appreciate my child's school. I trust but, my, I trust our kids' school as well. Yeah, I do. I and do. I actually, I, I trust the I trust the government here to actually Absolutely. go, well, up, oh, enough is enough, yep. and yep. let's shut this shit yep. down right away. And also trust the people and I'll to say not that, rise up and scream about their rights yeah, and all. <laughs> yeah. And I'll say this, if our kids have to go back to doing online um, uh-huh. uh, education here at home, uh, we're equipped to handle that. I know a lot of people aren't. But with yeah. me working from home, it'll go just fine if the kids have to yeah. come home and do schooling here. So yeah, I'll I'll be having some issues though because I yeah. I'm an essential employee and also I'm doing six classes yeah. this semester. So that's right. That you're would... still you're still doing that smart stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You and your brain. Huh. <laughs> 
going for that second degree. Hey, God, that's so admirable. I, it, it, that is truly admirable. Any adult uh, of our age who is going back to school, it. Uh, although I don't know if I don't think I said this, I am going to take a law class that they have opened up to the general public uh, from the University of Akron, back home in Ohio. Okay, uh, it's a law class. It is. Um, it is uh, focusing on racism and discrimination within the law. Oh. They open it up. I signed in, and I'm I'm taking this class. It starts in September. Stop it, John! I didn't yeah. even know that was a cl- that's a class. It, neither did I. Uh, a, a high school friend of mine who is a lawyer, she posted something about it that she was taking that class and that it was open to the public. So I jumped on it right away. Stop it. And I, who have always said I will never go back to school. (laughs) Why not? Never say no. No, because I, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if I have some level of ADD or something, but I cannot sit. I can't sit and be taught. I I can't, I can't. uh, Yeah. Let's let's talk to me about that, baby. Because let me tell you something and I'm going to, I'm going to keep this secret, even though it's going to be broadcasted. Um, <laughs> well, let's whisper, let's I actually whisper. have not been to class in like three semesters. I don't uh-huh. go to class. Are you one of those? I, I kind of, I think I also have that ADD kind of thing. Like I sit there and I zone the yeah, hell out, yeah, especially, yeah. especially when they're speaking in a foreign language, I'm like fucking out of there. So, uh, I don't bother driving all the way to class. I just follow along online and I do it at my own pace. And hey, you well, know, and there you go. And that's the only reason why I'm doing this class is because it is structured for online teaching. That's the perfect. only way I'm able to do it. I can't. Uh, I don't think I suffer from agoraphobia, but sometimes I ain't in the mood for people. And I yeah. don't the idea of sitting in some sort of classroom or auditorium surrounded by people and, and, and listen to that fucking kid open the wrapper yeah, and the soda pop. And I just can't God do it. Bless it. I no. just can't do it. And I guess it's a fault of mine. I don't I don't have the capability to focus. It's um, not a fault, John. It's a personality trait. That's what is I that like what it's to call called? it. Let's, yes. let's, let me write yes. that down. Personality it's trait. It's a personality trait. Fault. And it's not a fault. It's a personality <laughs> trait. I also have this thing about hearing people chew in class, like hearing them smacking their lips uh, on their on their chips and stuff. I, I get my shoulders get up here and I get all fucking twitchy and I just have my pen and I just want to stab them in the fucking a order but i don't i don't i have, have to take an anatomy it. class you can you find the yes order? i did i did that was my first degree i got a nursing degree that's I did. right you smart son i know of a gun where you. the a i know where the a order is smart son of a gun you <laughs> Well, listen, Miss Tiffany, I love you to death. Um, for our, for the listeners, this is a start of a new series. It's going to be a four episode series. Uh, Tuesday, Tiffy's Tuesday. What did we call this? Tiffy's Tuesday or Tuesday with Tiffy? Tiffy, 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 Tiffy Tuesday. Tiffy Tuesday. Tiffy and, Tuesday. And and uh, it's going to be these little uh, twenty minute, half hour long sessions sessions where my friend Miss Tiffany or Tiffy uh, will just come with her thoughts, her opinions. And uh, we'll throw Rambling. A, throw a little humor on it, and we'll just have a, a nice short little talk. <laughs> so, thank you so much, Miss Tiffany. This was uh, a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to the next uh, episodes in this little series. Me too. It's been so much fun talking to you again. I miss you. Yeah, hang on for Always. a while. Yeah, hang on for a while after I say goodbye to the listeners. Would you please? Yeah, say hi to Snoop for me too. I'll do that. She's in bed sleeping, and I. I yeah. When we're finished, I'm going to crawl right under those covers and get that uh, afternoon nap. I love Attaboy. those mystery naps where I never know how long they're going to be. Or never know where you're going to end up laying. As I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, thanks a lot. I'll I'll keep talking to you a minute in, uh, for a okay. minute afterwards, and to my listeners, right. thank you all for listening. Bye, everybody. I'm coming home. Home. Yes, I am, my Lord.